Thank you all so much. You know, I am a Baltimore born and raised girl, so this is a thrill for me. I can't believe we're standing here with all you patriotic Marylanders. And you know, I live in DC now, and so we, our gun laws, your gun laws, I feel your pain, I get it. You know, you, people used to say to me, when I started this whole journey on my on appreciating the Second Amendment and exercising my Second Amendment rights, a lot of you Marylanders would email me or tweet me on Facebook me and say, oh, Emily, it's not so bad, it's Maryland bad. And I would always compete with you and say, no, DC gun laws are the strictest. We're the strictest in the country. And now I'll say, after your new law, you guys win. <laughs> um, it is tough, I know. And you know, I, I got started a few years ago in all of this because I was a, um, a victim of a, a home invasion. I was dog sitting for friends and went out to walk the dog for a few minutes and came back and there was a man inside the house robbing it. And um, he left, he didn't hurt me, thank God. But um, he, around the corner, his friends were all sitting, sitting in, I, I followed him, and then there were two trucks parked and about 10 men standing around watching me, and one started running after me. And I got scared, I ran in the house, obviously then called the police, and you know they got away with my wallet, and that was it. But as I was going to bed that night, I was terrified, and I thought, gosh, I wish I had a gun by my night table, because then I could defend myself if these guys come back. And I didn't. And I tweeted the next day, I want to get a gun in DC. And everything I got was, never happened, you'll never get it, it's impossible. I couldn't understand what they were talking about. So I decided I was going to do it. At the time I was working for the Washington Times, I went to my editor and I said, I'm getting a gun for my own self-defense. How about I write about it in the newspaper? I said, I think it'll take about a week or two. I said, something you have a little space in the paper. Famous last words. Four months later, I'll tell you, it, it was so hard to get one legal gun in D.C. to keep it home for self-defense. In fact, I had to take, the hardest part was finding this class I had to take, five hours long, they can't teach it in D.C., and then I'll say as I went through this process, the city council changed the law a couple of times, and I'm pleased to see that, as I started exposing this, and they took away that five-hour class so you could watch it online. So guess who inherited our five-hour class? Go Maryland! <laughs> We actually don't have to do that anymore in D.C. We have a videotape. Um, and as you know, all the criminals who are shooting people are also at that five-hour class, making sure, I mean, it's such a silly law. Um, but I finally got my gun at home, and I do, I got a SIG, it's nine millimeters, and I keep it at home under my bed, and I do feel safer. I honestly do feel safer. And, um, but then it had occurred to me, well, Sure, I'm safe if somebody breaks in, but what happens if I'm walking down the street, which is really most likely where I'm going to get hurt? This is D.C., after all, and our crime does is as bad as is worse than yours for a city of our size. And then finally, this summer, a federal district court judge ruled that D.C.'s complete ban on carry laws, which is D.C. was the last place before Illinois that banned all. You couldn't even fly. The federal judge says that's unconstitutional because the Second Amendment clearly states the right to keep and bear arms. And so the city was just in turmoil over this, the city council, because this is the law that they love. And so they had to write a law because they, for this court order, and they wrote a new law that went into effect in October that said you can apply for a carry permit. So I started to do that, and I went down to the police station, so I'm here to get a carry permit, and the man at the counter at the police station said to me, well, Emily, and they know me there well, so I was there for four months straight. Um, well, Emily, you know, you can't just get a gun to protect yourself. I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, you have to have a special danger. And I said, yes, I'm afraid I'm going to get raped or murdered in D.C. And he said, no, that's not special. That's regular danger. See, it says right here in the law, just living in a high crime district, high crime area is not really a danger. That's just life in D.C. A special danger means that you know ahead of time that someone wants to actually kill you. Or they've already tried. So you have police reports, and you have hospital reports, or you have a bullet inside you. Whatever it is, you have to know in advance, and it has to be directed specifically to you. So I said to him, you know, and this was right before Chief Lanier banned cameras in the firearms gun office, but we still had this on video. I said to him, I don't understand. Are my Second Amendment rights not recognized here in D.C.? And he said, now, Emily, I think that was written back for when the British were coming. I said,
But no, no, actually historically not. But even then, it's still relevant. The Second Amendment hasn't gone anywhere. Um, and actually, I was just hearing earlier from my friend Ed Leary, I should have thanked him for having me here, and Dan for having me here. And it's so cool, I was hearing the history, where we're standing, this was one of the capitals, I did not know that, and George Washington was here. Well, when he, when they, our founding fathers, wrote the Second Amendment, they didn't worry about, they didn't say, you have the right to keep your arms, should not be infringed unless you have special dangers or unspecial dangers. It was just you had the right. And so, America, you know, I want to say one more thing, as I said, uh, Marylanders and I, and DCers, who all experience basically the same gun control laws, we always live a competitive of who's got it worse. And you, a lot of Marylanders have contacted me in the last few years and said, I'm moving. And a lot of them have. They've moved to Texas, they've moved to Florida, some of them moved to Virginia, places where their Second Amendment rights are being recognized fully. And or they can exercise their Second Amendment rights. And people ask me all the time, why don't you move out of DC, just move to Virginia? And you can do it. And I feel the same way I think a lot of you feel, and the ones you are standing out here, you still live in Maryland, is that no American should ever have to move to have their constitutional rights recognized. Right? Our, every constitutional right, all the amendments, everything, God gave us these rights. These are human rights. The Constitution just enumerates them and shows that our founding fathers believe these are important. These are our rights. We're not moving. Where the Constitution comes to us, we don't move for the Constitution. And, you know, I think a lot of us feel strongly about this is because this is, this is a debate, this is not about emotions, this is about principles, it's about the Constitution, and it's about facts. There's one fact that nobody will ever debate you if you're going to debate gun control with someone, is that there has never been a gun control law that has reduced gun crime. Ever. And I had this debate, ever. I had this debate on Saturday, I was on Fox with, um, Mike Bloomberg's top lobbyist, we were debating, and I said to him, Mark, on air, name one gun control law that has ever reduced crime, gun crime, any crime. Silence. It's not true. So why do we keep passing them? I honestly don't know. Um, and, and I just want to end with this. I, I, um, I, as I wrote, I wrote a book, Emily Gets Her Gun, about the process of getting a gun and about gun control laws and facts. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I ended it by saying, and this is really where I come from the heart on this, is that I really don't call myself pro-gun. That's not how I refer to myself. Uh, and I'm not really a gun nut, although I, I know you all want to see me at the range more often. But when I come to this as, I call myself pro-Second Amendment. Because a gun is a tool, but this fight, this fight is for freedom. And that's where we all are on this. Thank you.